Stars, the copyrighted program created by Rio Grande. Los Angeles Police calling all cars. Attention all cars. Broadcast 234 regarding a missing person. Maybe a kidnapping. No description of suspects. That's all. Rose and Quiz. Violate the laws of the land, and you wind up behind prison bars. Break the laws of automotive lubrication, and your car goes to a premature death. Friends, there is a way to keep that car of yours on the straight and narrow path that adds extra years of maximum efficiency and usefulness to its lifespan. Safeguard your motor against avoidable wear and possible breakdown by giving it real lube. Real lube, the newest and finest motor oil sold in the West. Dr. Lindsley, I followed your suggestion. I drove in the Rio Grande station and got real lube last weekend when I drove to the desert. The two fellows with me kept saying, come on, open it up, let's see what it'll do, and so I gave it the works for a long stretch. And was that weather hot? Well, when we got back home, I stopped in for another quart of oil, and you know what that Rio Grande dealer said? Mm-hmm. Okay, but where'll I put it? Your gauge says full right now. Well, that's a very common experience, Mr. Kroger. Rio Lube can't break down under any heat, regardless of how fast you drive. Produced in the largest refinery in America, it is the newest and finest motor oil sold in the West. Cost? Only 25 cents a quart in cans, sealed for your protection. It is the perfect companion product to Rio Grande cracked gasoline. The story we are to hear tonight was taken from the records on file in the police department of the city of Los Angeles. We have therefore asked Chief James E. Davis to open our program. Chief Davis. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Without a spirit of cooperation between all branches of the law enforcement profession, there can be no concerted action against crime and criminals. It is no uncommon sight to see the sheriff's officers, district attorney investigators, and men from the police department working side by side in the solution of a crime. Tonight's story is a case in point. Without the cooperation of all divisions of law enforcement, the criminals involved in this case might still be at large. In a chase that extended into other states and even across part of the Pacific Ocean, only the splendid cooperation of the officers working on the case resulted in its final solution. But I have more on this, which I shall reserve for the end of the program. The role of Lefty James in tonight's story is played by the celebrated actor, Mr. Edmund Lowe. The cold December fog rolled and eddied up the hillside as a car wound its way through the murky darkness toward the house that stood at the summit. In the car rode a man and a woman. A lot of fog tonight. Hard to see the road. I'll be glad to get in out of it. Boy, was I glad you met the train. I dreaded taking a taxi clear out here to Hollywood. When do you have to go back? Not later than tomorrow night. We're opening next week. Christmas Day? Yes. That's the first day of the Caliente racing season. I got a lot to do before then. Then you won't be home for Christmas? Afraid not. Does it look like Caliente's going to have a good season this year? Judging by the people I've seen coming in down there, I'd say yes. Mm, I see what I've got lights on. Yeah, I'll be glad to get home. Get out of this pea soup fog. Won't be long now. You said it. This is the end of the line. Is that? Huh? Look. There's a car coming around the driveway from the other side. Yeah. Looks bad. Keep quiet. Hold up. Maybe. I don't know. Okay, climb out. This is as far as you drive. You too, lady. Ah, never mind. Stay where you are. Ray, take care of this dame. Okay. What's coming off here? What do you think? Well, I think it's a holdup. Hey, you're practically right. How much money you got, guy? About a hundred bucks, maybe a hundred and a quarter. Don't try to be funny with me, you big ape. I'll bend this rod over your head. How much jack you got in the bank? We've only got about three thousand. Who asked you? Button your lip. Oh, let's push him over, Sheldon. You keep your shirt on. Now, look, chum, we want jack, and I don't mean chicken feed. Come on, get in the car. Well, you're not taking us for a ride, are you? What do you think? No. <laughs> you're just going for a little trip in the country. Dolan, get these people blindfolded. I'm going in the house and get that dame's diamonds. And that's what you think. What do you mean? You don't think I'm sap enough to leave things like that lying around the house, do you? Those diamonds are in a safe place, my boy. 
You won't get them. Oh, so sorrow did not mean to interrupting hold up. Doolin, get him. Bring him back here. Okay. Oh, do not pushing. We'll go easily. Come on, get going. Who's this bird? He's Walker, our houseboy. Can he talk better English than that? I managed to understand him all right. Yeah? Well, tell him to get in the car. No, you better put him in your car, Doolin. Come on, Waco. And blindfold him good. I don't trust them birds. Okay, you two, load up and let's get going. Doolin, you come over and drive this hack. Wagner can take your buggy in a jap. Get going, Ray. See you at the house. <laughs> Down to the fog-drenched night, the kidnappers and their victims made their way toward the place of rendezvous. There, still blindfolded, the three prisoners were thrust into the darkened house, selected as their prison. Throughout the long night and the day that followed, they were guarded by the hoodlums. Dozens of times they came in and went out, but never leaving the prisoners unwatched. Our scene shifts now to 9th and San Pedro streets in Los Angeles. An automobile pulls to a stop beside a parked car. Hi, Bruneman. Let's get going. We'll keep you. Yeah, just stall around while we're Zach. Can the patter and get in. Uh, what's the matter with you, then? Got a grouse on tonight? Cheer up, pal. We're going to get a lot of Jack out of this. Yeah? Give him them checks, Doolin. Yeah. Yeah, Bruneman. Here's Fondell's checks for 50 grand. Oh, boy. Think you can cash them tonight? Well, maybe not all of them, but we'll get the rest Monday. Which gambling boat you going to try? Uh, let's try the Johanna Smith first, eh? Yeah, it'll make no difference which one. Come on, shove off. You've gone too far. You passed the place where we catch the water taxi. Well, why didn't you yell before? I was talking. You always are. Ah, pipe down. Shuttle's worse than Louis Frank. We'll park here till you birds make up your minds what you're going to do. Yeah, we could go on down further and go on out to one of the other boats. Hey, watch it. There's a cop's car coming, and it looks like they're going to stop. They do, and we'll blast. Take it easy, Ralph. You're going to get us all in the jam. You're too handy with that joint. Let me handle this. Sure, I can chill the beef. Yeah, you better do it, then. Uh, what are you boys doing out here this time of night? We're just waiting to decide which gambling boat to go to. Well, in that case, you won't object to our looking you over. Get going, Bruneman. Square this beef. Oh, officer. Huh? I'm Les Bruneman. These boys are friends of mine. They're okay. That's so? How do I know you're okay? Well, here's my card. That'll identify me. I can vouch for these boys. Uh, just the same. I'm going to look them over. Yeah? You'll have to be quick at it, copper. Jakes! Get over here! Hot-headed, vicious Ralph Sheldon had again shot an officer. Patrolman Wagoner lay severely wounded when the firing had ceased. Sheldon had been captured by a passing officer. Ray Wagner, shot through the body, had escaped. Jimmy Doolan, diving in the ship channel, had also made his way to safety. Lester Bruneman, erstwhile companion of the kidnappers, now turned coat and appeared as the wrong friend of the kidnapped man. His pitiful tale of being hijacked by the kidnappers of his abduction to Long Beach, and of his innocent participation as a go-between in an effort to save the life of his friend, stirred the hearts of the arresting officers who had no reason to suspect his duplicity. In like manner, Zach Pondell also felt that Bruneman had been his friend, that he had fallen victim of the ruthless kidnappers. So Les Bruneman was released. Time passed. Ray Wagner was located in Phoenix and arrested. Louis Franks was arrested with him. Sheldon was already in jail. Bruneman was rearrested and brought to trial with the other three defendants in Long Beach. For weary weeks, the trial dragged on. At last, the jury was ready to return their verdict. Then, one spring day in the courtroom of Judge William Aguilar, a stunned court heard the verdict, not guilty. Four hoodlums were found not guilty of the cold-blooded and wanton shooting of a police officer in performance of his duty. But freedom was not to be so easily gained for the killer kidnappers. New charges had to be answered, charges of kidnapping. But of more concern to the criminals was the fact that Lefty James, ace investigator of the Los Angeles Police Department, had been assigned to the case. James chose as his assistants Detective Lieutenants Filkis and Baggett. The three meet to confer with Deputy District Attorney James Costello. Jimmy, I sent for you to talk over this case of Zach Fondell. I'm going to see what I can find out on that case. You've got a job ahead of you. I know I have. Joe, what have you boys got in this thing? Practically nothing. Bag and I've run down every lead we can get our hands on. But so far, the net result is nothing. Well, I've read the transcript of the Long Beach trial of those boys pretty thoroughly. 
There's some reason why Zack can't identify those monkeys as the ones who kidnapped him. Well, I heard that when they put the lug on him for that money just after they pulled this caper, that they suggested sending his wife's ears to him in an envelope. And that'd stop about any man, Lefty. Yeah, Baggett, I'm afraid it would. I still think that Zack would have identified those boys if he had any idea that the case was going to go the way it did. You're probably right on that, but none of us could foresee it. Jimmy, according to the transcript, Zack gave these fellows some $20,000. That's right. Ah, boy, that's a king's ransom. Depends on the king. I've got a hunch it cost him more than that. You can bet on it. Where was this money turned over? Bruneman brought it over to San Diego and gave it to some of the boys at the hotel there. Didn't say who the boys were, did he? Yeah, Doolin and Orsatti. Cheesy Orsatti. Oh, Cheesy's in on this, is he? Seems to be. And we'll start with him. Bring him in. I want to talk to him. I thought you would. He's waiting in the next office. All right, let's talk to him. Hello, Cheesy. Uh, hello, Lefty. How's trick? That depends on who's pulling them. What do you mean? Sit down, Cheesy. Been out to the ball games lately? Not since you told me you'd split my skull if you caught me there. You're a smart boy, Cheesy. Stay that way. We're going to find out a few things. We want the truth from you. Now, what about, Lefty? About the Zach Fondell kidnapping. Well, I don't know nothing about it. What hotel did you go to in San Diego? When? When you went down with Jimmy Dillon. Well, we didn't go to San Diego. Cheesy, have I ever told you I'd do something and didn't do it? No, Lefty. You always keep your word. Well, Cheesy, I'm giving you my word on something. I'm going to hook you in with a gang that snatched Zach Von Dell. And when I do, I'll send you up if it's the last thing I do. I don't forget that. Well, Lefty, I hear you've been to San Diego. Yeah. What'd you find out? Or said he lied. You sure? Positive. Focus and I took along a bunch of mug pictures of the Sheldon gang. And the druggist in San Ysidro identified Cheesy and Doolin as being two men who hung out in that drugstore and waited for about an hour till they got hold of a fellow in Caliente. Mm, that would be Fondell. Yep, Zach Fondell. Well, how did you happen to pick San Ysidro to start with? Remember when Cheesy was in here the other day? Uh, yeah, why? Remember him lighting a couple of cigarettes? Hmm, what's the connection? The matches he used had an ad for that drugstore in San Ysidro printed on them. Mm, what else did you get? We found out that two fellows answering the description of those mugs were seen at the Waldorf Hotel. We checked there, and they'd been in there. They called Zach from there the first time. Here's Wacko, Lefty, but he won't talk. Come on in, Wacko. Sit down. Now, now, take it easy. We're not going to hurt you. Uh, but why do you sending for me, please? Take a look at those pictures, Wacko. Ever seen them before? No, no, never see pictures. No. Ever see the men in those pictures? Well, uh, maybe yes, uh, maybe no. Make up your mind. We're not able to tell him from pictures. Wacko, do you think you could find a house where you were held prisoner that night? Oh, yes. Can find him. Joe, you still got your field glasses down here? Yeah, my dad. Go get them, will you? Sure. Be right back. Wacko, you know Mr. Costello, don't you? No, no. I'm not knowing him. He's a deputy district attorney. You know what that means? No, no. Thank you. Well, he's going to see that the men who kidnapped you and the Fondells are arrested and put in prison. Well, good thing if can do all right. Can do all right. You just bring along with us and tell us the truth. We'll take care of the rest of it. Well, cannot tell any more, any more than already have told. I think you can. We'll see. Here are the glasses, Lefty. Got a map of the eastern part of Alhambra Boulevard, Jimmy? Sure, why? All right, bring it along. Let's drive out to where Zack and Helen and Wacko were turned loose that morning. <laughs> Is this about right, Wacko? Uh, not to think so, no. Two, maybe three blocks farther on by school. Are you sure it's out this way? Oh, yes, please. Very too sure. Red street car run across the road. Steam train run by side of road. Oh, yes. Very sure, yes, sir. All right, Wacko. Take these glasses and see if you can find a house. How can you do that if he doesn't know where it was? Oh, yes. Can do. House hard here on each side. No here in the front side, you know. And having this work in front of windows. All right, Wacko. You start with that block at the top of the hill there. We'll check them off on the map as you look at each house. Uh-huh. Oh, let me see. No can find in the first block. All right, try the next one. Uh-huh. Not in the first house. Not the next one. Not in that one. Not that. I think not in second block, please. Try the next one. So... Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, first house. No, no, not that one. Second house. No, no, no. No. Ah, third house on street. Already we see. I believe in... Is that the one? 
I think so, please. Yes, that is one. What street is that, Jimmy? Templeton. Let's take a look at that house. Place, Waco? Yes, please. This is place, all right. Should be six wooden steps up to first landing, then a 16 more steps to door. Oh, you counted them, did you? Oh, yes, sir. Thank you. Well, looks like the place has been burned. Trying to destroy evidence, probably. Now, what did you say the number was, Waco, the one you felt of while you were blindfolded? A number 4733. This is the right place, then. Let's see if the keys we got out of that car in the Long Beach case fit this door. Oh, fits perfectly. Well, they didn't do such a bad job of burning the dump, did they? I'll say they didn't. Waco, did you have a fire in this fireplace? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir, please. I put in much wood on fire, then tried to set curtains on fire. Why? Well, so firemen can come and rescue me. Well, that's a good idea, but it worked. Uh-huh. Why didn't it? Why? We well, because, you see, number one boss man to make me put some of fire out. Who was number one boss man, Waco? A gentleman named calling Sheridan. Why didn't you tell us that before? I are told not to. Who told you not to? Uh, no can tell. If we find the rest of the mob, you will identify them? But if you find all of mob, then Waco identify same. It's a deal. Well, uh, Waco, uh, did you hear any of the boys called Bailey? No, no, thank you. No. Where did you get that name? I found this claim check in the fireplace. It's from the shoe shop in Hollywood, and Bailey's name is on the back of it. I know, telling how long that's been here. Oh, yes, there is. If it had been here when Waco built the fire, it would have burned. If it was put here afterward, Bailey must have access to this house. He may have been one of the gang who tried to burn this place. Very likely. At least he's been in this house since Zach and his wife left here. There's no logical reason why he should have been here if he's not mixed up in this. Joe, we'll take a run over to Hollywood and see what we can find out about Mr. Bailey. In Hollywood, James found that the claim check found in the burned house had been issued only a few days before the date of the Fondell kidnapping. Members of the shop immediately identified photographs from police files as being pictures of the man who left the shoes to be repaired. That man was William Bailey, Eastern mobster. His address was obtained, but the suspect had fled. While Lieutenants Filkus and Baggett went in search of Orsati, Lefty James received a caller in his office. Now, what was it you wanted to see me about? Well, when I read in the papers about these men who shot that officer in Long Beach, I thought I recognized some of their pictures. But when I read about this Mr. Bruneman... I knew where I had seen them before. Where was that? Well, you see, I work in the credit department of a radio or music store. And I've been trying to trace a man named Doolin for several months. He came in and bought a radio last December. Uh, on the 12th, I believe. And he gave Mr. Bruneman his reference. And some other fellow named, uh, named Frank. Well, I haven't been able to get in touch with either of them. And now I understand you've got Mr. Doolin in jail. Well, not yet, but we hope to. Did he use his right name when he bought that radio? <laughs> no, sir. He told me his name was J.J. Clark, but he gave these other two as references, and they checked up all right. You say this was December the 12th? Yes, sir. How do you know? Well, here's a copy of the sales contract. There, you can see the date for yourself. Mm-hmm. He gives Les Doolin his reference all right. You sure this man is Jimmy Doolin? I'm positive. I saw his picture as one of the men who escaped. I'd know him anywhere. Was he alone when he bought the radio? No, there was a short, dark fellow with him. Hear his name? No, sir. Know him? You saw him again? Oh, yes, sir. Here's Cheesy again, Lefty. Come on in, Cheesy. <gasps> That's the man who was with Clark or, or Doolin when he bought the radio. How about that, Cheesy? How come you always picking on me, Lefty? I ain't done nothing. I'll stop picking on you when you come clean and tell me what you know about the Fondell case. And I don't know nothing about it, Lefty. Honest. You couldn't be honest if you tried. Thanks, miss, for coming in and identifying this monkey. Well, it's been a pleasure. What's eating that damn? What did you find, Cheesy, Focus? Out in the ballpark. What did I tell you about that ballpark, Cheesy? Oh, gee, Lefty, you wouldn't do that to a guy, would you? That's what you think. Let me hear of one hold-up or hijacking out there, and it's a vacant lot for you. Why don't we do that anyway, Lefty? I save time. I'm fed up with rats like this one. Oh, you got me all wrong, Lefty. I'll tell you what I know. It ain't much, though. Go on, spill it. Well, I did know Jimmy Doolin and the boys, but I didn't have nothing to do with them, though. So I get it. Did they know Les Bruneman before they snatched Bondell? No, they never seen him. How do you explain that Dylan gave Bruneman as a reference on that radio deal? Three weeks before Fondell was kidnapped, and you were with him. Well, I... I, I was... Did you go to San Diego with Dylan? No, I... Don't was... lie to me, Orsetti. I ain't lying to you, Lefty. 
Uh, say, you got a cigarette, Joe? Sure, here you are. Uh, thanks. Nervous, cheesy? No, no, I, I ain't Want nervous. a match? Oh, oh, yeah. Sure you can smoke it yourself, cheesy? Ever seen matches like those? Uh, not that I know of. That's funny. You left them on my desk the last time you were in here. They come from Sanya Sidro Pharmacy. You just got back in town then, hadn't you? Well, you see, I... Get I started will... telling the truth, Cheesy, before I slap you in the brig from now on. Yeah? What for? For conspiracy to kidnap Zach Von Dell. No, you ain't gonna pin that rap on me. I didn't do that. All I did was point him out for him. They took him. I didn't. Want to tell me about it, Cheesy? Will you let me get out of this if I do? I don't make bargains with mugs like you, but we'll see about it. Well, it was like this, see? Uh, this fellow Doolin and Louis Frank and Ralph Sheldon, they met Les Bruneman over in Phoenix a couple of years ago. Well, Les told them if they ever got out here to look him up, so they did. Uh, they asked him where they could pull a caper in a hurry, and Les told them about some wild guy that had lots of jack. So they was going to take this guy for a couple of hundred grand. Uh, but the deal fell through. What happened? Well, we all went up to this guy's house, but he wasn't home. Uh, he was down in Palm Springs or someplace. But it was too much trouble to find him, so we goes back to see Les. And he says, well, how about Zach Fondell? He's got lots of jack. So they says, okay, let's take him. And then they said, will you put the finger on him for us? And Les said, no, he knows me too well. Well, who will we get then, they said. So Les said, why, why don't, don't you, you get... get cheesy or savvy? Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. So then we drives down to the depot and waits for Zach to come in. The first time we couldn't take him because he had another guy with him. And Helen had a dame in the car with her, too. But the next week, I saw him coming down the platform, and I said, There he is, boys. Go get him. Did they? Did they what? Go get him. Oh, sure. Uh, Jimmy Doolin was driving one car, and Bill Bailey was driving another one. Uh, Ralph Sheldon was in the crowd, too. Who else? Well, I remember Ray Wagner and Louis Franks and maybe some other monkey, but I ain't sure. Couldn't have been Les Bruneman. No, oh, no. Les was sitting home waiting for a phone call. Yeah, he was going to act as go-between for the boy. And all you were was the finger man, that right? Yeah, sure, that's all. You don't think that's much of a job, do you, Cheesy? <laughs> no. Just a little piece of pin money was what you were after, weren't you? Yeah, sure. Did it ever occur to you that you were just as guilty as the other boys? No, I, I never give it a thought. Just casual, like that, huh? Sure. Know where Dylan is now? Well, he was in Honolulu last time I heard of him. Honolulu, huh? I think I'll look into that. I've got a friend over there in the police department. Sort of cheap of police. I think I'll have him suggest to Jimmy that he ought to come home. Hey, you ain't going to tell the boys I talked to you, are you, Lefty? Of course not. Where's Bailey? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I think he's in Panama somewhere. Joe, see when the next boat leaves for Panama. Sure thing, Lefty. Well, Sally, how about Ray Wagner? Have any idea where he went to? Well, last time I heard of him, he was headed for St. Louis. Yeah, he used to operate out of there, him and Sheldon and a guy named Davino. Think of anything else, Cheesy? No, Lefty, I, I don't think so. Yeah, yeah but look, you, you ain't going to let on I talked, are you? The boys might not like it. Why, Cheesy, you know I'll protect you. She left it. That's square of you. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I'm going to see to it that you'll get a place to stay where nobody will bother you. Thanks, Lefty. Joe, take this stinking rat over to Jimmy Costello and swear out a complaint charging him with kidnapping and conspiracy. Maybe that'll keep him out of my sight. Oh, gee, Lefty, that ain't no way to treat a pal. Get him out of here, Joe, before I start looking for vacant lots. Oh, come on, Joe, let's cram. I don't think Lefty likes me anymore. Cheesy, I think you're psychic. Come on. Madeline, want to write a couple of letters for me? Sure, Lefty. Who to? The chief of police, Honolulu, H.T. Dear sir, please see what your boys can find about a bird who calls himself Jimmy Doolin. From Honolulu came the reply... Jimmy Doolin, decided change of scenery necessary. Local hoodlums beat him up with a crowbar. He may be able to talk by the time the steamship city of Los Angeles reaches San Pedro. Regards. From St. Louis, word came back... Wagner hiding in the swamps of the Missouri River bottom. We'll pick him up whenever you want him. From Panama City, word came... Local shopkeeper and woman identifies picture of Bill Bailey appearing in Detective Magazine as man working for her manager. We'll arrest and hold for your officers. Thus, members of the kidnapping gang were rounded up. Doolin, Bailey, and Wagner were returned to face trial along with the other members of the gang already in custody. At last, the climactic moment of identification came. In a room at the General Hospital in Los Angeles, the Superior Court met in special session. As we've explained before, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we have brought you out here along with the defendants on trial in the case to see if one of the victims of this crime can identify any member of the gang. 
We have shown conclusively the connection of these men, one with the other. Identification of one must of necessity involve all. Our witness, who will be here in a few moments, is the Fondell houseboy, known as Waco. He's dying of tuberculosis. It is problematical if this witness will survive this trial. Unfortunately, the state is not permitted to parade the suspects before the witness. And Walker was not able to sit up. Nor are we allowed to assist him in any way? We must do the best we can with what testimony he can give. Bring in uh, T. Wakabashi. Uh, I think you can wheel him right over here. Uh, that's it. Now, Walker, we're not going to ask you a lot of questions. We just want to know if you see in this room... Any of the men who kidnapped you and held you prisoner? <coughs> oh, just take your time and look around. Hey, Sheldon, get up and take a walk over to Costello. Yeah? I'll come, copper. I said take a walk, you lugger. I'll take a post with that sour face of yours. Okay, okay, keep your shirt on. Oh, Mr. Costello, can I see you a minute? Oh, that is man. That is number one boss man. He is one of men who kidnapped Mr. Fonder. And Mr. Mrs. Fonder and me. Uh, are you sure, Waco? Uh, yes, I am sure. I know his face, any place. That is man. Uh, tell me, Waco, you refused to identify this man once. Now you'll do it. Why? Well, you see, those men, they say to Mr. Fonder and Mrs. Fonder, uh, they say, you tell who we are and we come back and kill you. We cut off Mrs. Fonder's ears and send same home in an envelope. They say to me, you forget what we look like or it be too bad for one small Japanese. <clears throat> now I do not care anymore. Waco is going to die. Anyway, policemen keep gunsters from cutting off Mrs. Fonder's ears. So now everybody happy. Thank you, priest. <laughs> just a moment, Chief Davis will present some additional facts. The most modern machine gun is of no value in the war against crime unless it's loaded. The same is true of the emergency cars which figure so prominently in every manhunt. These must get their automobiles have maximum efficiency when they are loaded with the sure fire ammunition of quicker on the trigger Rio Grande cracked. The gasoline that costs less because it delivers speedier acceleration and the top power and speed of which a car is capable. This is the test-proved conviction of an army of your public servants, the men at the wheels of your police cars, fire engines, ambulances, and your state and federal government officials, an overwhelming number of whom depend upon Rio Grande to power their emergency automotive equipment. Tens of thousands of motorists also use this better gasoline and are enjoying the same police car performance that awaits you at the red and white Rio Grande station in your neighborhood. Begin getting your police car performance with Rio Grande cracked now. And Chief Davis... Walker was right. Policemen keep gangsters from cutting off ears. That particular group of gangsters was found guilty and sent to San Quentin. That is, all except Les Bruneman. What later happened in his case is now history. A history that came to an end when 1445 caliber automatic slugs ended his life in a tavern in Los Angeles. But history that proves again, and most conclusively, that crime does not pay. Thank you, Chief Davis. Angeles police calling all cars, attention all cars, to cancellation of broadcast 234 regarding a kidnapping. Suspects in this case are now in custody. That's all. Rose and Quiz. Frederick Lindsley bidding you good night for Rio Grande, 